Hello students, today we are going to study plant reproduction. Plant reproduction. The reproduction is regeneration, giving rise to young ones which are similar like you. So, reproduction is giving rise to individuals which are similar to you. So, how do the plants carry out reproduction? We eat uh, banana, we eat mango and even our forefathers have been eating those fruits. Why? Well, because even the plants reproduce. So what type of reproduction the plants carry out? The two types of reproduction. Sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So what happens in this process? In sexual reproduction, reproductive cells are produced. The cell which is give, going to give rise to young one, a new plant, a new individual. So this reproductive cells, they are known as gametes. Gametes are reproductive cells. So we are going to step, say every time reproductive cell, we are going to say gametes. Gametes means reproductive cells. Now, this reproductive cells or gametes are of two types, male and female. These cells are going to combine and form zygote. Zygote is the new individual. In the seed, there is a zygote hiding. When you put water on the seed, the zygote tries to come out. So, zygote is the seed, it's the new individual, it is going to give rise to a new plant which is similar to the parent, parent plant. So, this is how the reproduction takes place. Examples are given in your textbook. For sexual reproduction, moon, balsam, pea, sunflower. So, this plants, they carry out sexual reproduction. So what is asexual reproduction? They uh, are formed. They are, and a single plant gives rise to a new individual. So many plants you see, one plant is there, then it gives rise to another plant, another plant, another plant. They do not carry out sexual reproduction. That is asexual reproduction. They start from a single parent, a new individual is formed. The example here given fern mosses. Ferns are the small plants, decorative plants which you see. So if the gardener puts one fern, there will be many fern together. Because they carry out asexual reproduction, just giving rise to new ferns from a single plant. So that is asexual reproduction. No fertilization takes place. Mosses during the rainy season, small plants which you see, very small, tiny, green color, those are mosses. They also, they produce a section. Sometimes, some plants which have got flowers, but still they can reproduce vegetatively, asexually. Like you take a rose plant, it has got flowers, but you cut, take a stem and put in sand, they gave rise to full plant. So even the plants which have got flowers will reproduce a section. So this is how two types of reproduction. Now we have already studied pollination. Pollination you have studied the androsium which has got a slender filament and on the filament there are anther lobes. They are in lobes. What is there in the anther lobes? Pollen sacs. What is there in the pollen sacs? Pollen grains. Now what are pollen grains? They are sperm cells. They are male gametes. They are present here. So this is sperm cells. Male gamete is a male reproductive cell. It has for sexual reproduction, it has to reach a female reproductive cell. So, where is the female reproductive cell? It is there in the gynaceum. Gynaceum, known as individual carpal 
which is a stigma style ovary ovule. Stigma is just for taking the pollen grains. Style is the pipe through which it will pass. It will reach ovary. Now ovary will consist of ovules and in the ovules you will find the female reproductive cell. Female reproductive cell is also known as egg cell. So this sperm cell from pollen grains here in pollen sacs, pollen grains are present. It will burst. When enter mature, it will burst. So this pollen grains will be coming out. It has to reach the stigma. From here, the stigma, it will come here and fertilize and form a zygote. After fertilization, what is formed is zygote. Zygote will give rise to the new individual. So, now this fertilization will take place. As the cell enters, fertilization will take place here. So, now I will be teaching how actually the fertilization takes place. Fertilization. Fertilization, how the actual process takes place in fertilization. Now you have learned up till how the, uh, the pollen grains are there on the stigma. On stigma there is a sugary fluid. There is a sugary fluid on stigma. And there are many pollen grains. But they will give out tube. As, as they get sugary fluid they will give out tubes. They will all start giving tubes. Now whichever is fastest will give out a tube which will reach ovule. So, have you understood this? That the, the pollen grains are present on the stigma. Stigma has got the sugary nectar. Due to the nectar, it has germinated. It has given tube. This has given tube. And many pollen grains will be there. So, they will all start giving tube. So, here this is one tube which has not reached. This is one tube which has elongated and reached the ovules. Now inside will be the male gametes, the sperm cells which will reach the female gamete. Here will be the female gametes. Sperm cells will be in the tube. They will reach this egg cell. Fertilization will take place here. Now as soon as the fertilization takes place, what is going to be formed? An embryo. So, now this embryo will be there in what? Ovule. Ovule has got the female's reproductive cell, egg cell, which is present in ovule. So, ovule has got the egg cell, now fertilization has taken place, embryo will be there in the ovule. O ovule is covered by ovary. This whole structure, outside structure is the ovary, inside the ovary is the ovule, inside the ovule is the embryo, which has the capability of giving rise to a new plant. So now fertilization has taken place, what will happen? Whatever the corolla sepals all will go away, now this will form a seed. Ovule will form a seed and ovary will form a fruit. So now you have ovary that is fruit and inside the ovary is the seed. Inside the seed is the embryo. Now this embryo is present inside the seed. It will give rise to a new plant. So now we have us after fertilization this process happens, what we do is eat the fruit and throw the seed. The seed, it germinates into a new plant. So now we have seed. As soon as the seed, now seed has got cotyledons. Have you seen the mango seed? It has got cotyledon. Cotyledon has got nutrients which will give to the seeds to grow. And once it has grown into a new plant, then 
the cotyledons will fall off because it has taken all the nutrient so here seed has been formed it has got baby plant to nourish the baby is the cotyledon which gives the nutrient which is also the seed leaves now as the fruit ripen the seed inside also mature so we always eat the ripened fruit for example mango as soon as it ripens we'll eat it and throw the seed in the soil seeds also mature they are ready for dispersal and as soon as they get now this is the structure of a seed it has got a seed coat a coat a cover which will uh, protect the embryo inside which will protects the seed itself the cotyledon but as soon as it gets water air warmth the seed coat will soften and it will give out the shoot and root and as soon as the shoot develops the green color leaves it does not need cotyledons cotyledons will shrivel it will fall on the ground and it will disappear and the plants will give out the roots it will germinate and then grow into a new plant seed dispersal now after the seed has been formed is going to germinate but before that it is a dry seed which has to be distributed to places because if all the seeds they fall at the same place then there will be competition and the survival of the plant will be very few so to eliminate the competition it has to be dispersed it has to go places so that more and more plant will be produced so very important that the seed has to be dispersed properly so it goes to more places now seed dispersal helps to eliminate competition among themselves you if you uh, take some moong seeds and put on the uh, soil they will, only few will germinate but if you give them space then all will germinate so there is competition when all the seeds are together but if you disperse them give some space then all will germinate same thing applies to all the types of seed it has to be dispersed places so they are to eliminate competition less competition will be there because they have soil air water everything and greater chances of survival more they reproduce more chances of survival supposing such a variety of fruit it will if it is disposed dispersed to various places it will survive it will grow it will evolve so this is how seed dispersal is very important now how does it take place small seeds they can be carried by the wind plants which have small seeds small and light the example given in your textbook is maple and drumstick they are very small but they are they have developed structure which will make them fly with the wind so they have wings they have wing like structure dandelion it has got fine hairs that will also make them fly with the wind so they have to be light they have to have wings they have to have hairs which will make them fly with the wind and when they fall in a place which is conducive for their growth they will fall they will get water soil and they will germinate into a new plant so this is our dispersal by wind now dispersal by explosion of fruit pea and balsam the fruit the pod will get dried up so when it's very dry it will burst and all the pods will be distributed go places and then new pea plants new balsam will be developed so that is the dispersal by explosion 
it will just be dried, dehydrated and matured and then it will burst and distribute to various places. Then there are many water plants. You have seen coconut. So hard it is. So protective it is. It has to survive in water. But still float in water to go to another places. So it has got fibers on it. The fibers will have space. And that space will have air. So what it is going to do it? Uh, have air in the fibers which will help to float in the water. So that's an adaptation to go from one place to another. Water will carry. But when it will carry? When it is able to carry. How it is able to carry? Because it has got fibers on it. Which has got space. Which has got air in it. Which helps to float. So dispersible of water, dispersal by water, it should have air spaces. Because it has to float. It did not sink. If it sinks, then gone. It has to float. It has to float to another place. So either it has got air spaces or it has got fibrous outer covering which has air in it. So fibrous outer covering that traps air. And hard protective covering, like coconut you have seen, hard protective covering, it may not dissolve in water, it may not uh, rot in water. So it has to have a protective shell. So example here, dispersal by water, coconut, lotus, water lily. So you can identify with uh, coconut, lotus, water lily that they are dispersed by water, they are water plants, so they have to be dispersed by water. Now, for bigger plants, most important is dispersal by animals. Now, small seeds with hooks, spine, you can see like kata type of seeds are there, they will get attached to the fur of the animals and they will be carried to another place, they will fall off, they will get water, they'll get warm, they'll get soil, they'll germinate. Spine is pointed. Spine is pointed. Again, that can get attached to the fur of the animal. Again, it reaches to some place where there's, there's soil, there's warm, there is water, it will grow. Now, burr is something like a rough edge. The seed has got the rough edge. Again it will get attached to some animal, again it will go to some place which has got soil, warm water, it will grow. Example, the seed of purple bird, spiny, has got the spiny cover. Now, dispersal by animal is, this is one type, but we do uh, distribute the seeds. Supposing we eat some fruit, like for example mango. We eat the outer cover, the juicy part, the fleshy part and we throw the seed somewhere. So again, wherever we throw, it will get a suitable environment, soil, water, warm. It will germinate and grow into a new plant. Again, we eat fruit like guava. Animals also eat guava. Those seeds we don't chew, we don't eat. We don't throw, throw also, but it, we gulp it. It is so hard, it does not get digested. We excrete out. Now, wherever that excreta goes, any animal can excrete that seed as it is in the soil. And it gets soil, water, warm. It will germinate into a new plant. So, this is how animals along with humans... They help in dispersal of different types of seeds. There are a number of seeds, different types, which the animals, that includes us also, which helps in dispersal of different types of seeds. So this is how the dispersal of seed takes place normally, in, normally by different methods, by wind, explosion, air, uh, water and animals. Asexual reproduction in plants. They are also known as vegetative reproduction or vegetative propagation. 
Why they are not formed by fertilization? They are not formed by flower. They are formed by parts other than flower. They are formed by parts other than flower. So, which are those parts which are responsible for reproduction? It happens different in different plants. Different type of reproduction takes place, especially in the smaller plants. So, let us take some examples. Now, stem. When you think about onion, you think about some bulb. Bulb. Onion is a bulb. You must have seen the green leaves also and the actual bulb which you eat, that onion which you leave. eat it. So you remember that it's a stem. You might wonder how it could be stem, but stem it is modified. It is modified to and condensed to form fleshy uh, leaves. And they are like one above the other, those leaves. Uh, they are stem actually, they form fleshy leaves and they cover each other. And they cover and they form in such a way that they form a bulb. So that bulb has got fleshy leaves, which is actually a stem. So do not get confused, it's a modification. And they have modified as they want, so we have to study as they have modified. So they are stem actually. So how they have modified to form fleshy leaves covering one above the other to form a bulb. So that stem has formed a bulb and it is capable of reproduction. It has got food in it, it has got embryo in it, it has got it is capable of giving rise to another onion plant. So it is that bulb is a reproductive organ structure and since it is other than the actual fertilization it is known as vegetative reproduction or vegetative propagation propagation is giving rise to a new one new plant so how does it propagate how does it give rise to a new onion plant it is by stem it's a modified stem to modify to form a bulb bulb is made up of fleshy leaves so this is the classic example of stem modification and which are the other uh, examples which you can connect that is garlic. Garlic is also a bulb. It is a modified stem. Lily, tulip, they are modified stem responsible for reproduction. So this is one thing. Now again by stem itself. Have you eaten strawberry, red color, tasty strawberry? And have you ever been to a farm where you see strawberry? Mahableshwar, if you go, you will see all strawberry down. How they reproduce? By modified stem. But they just, the stems, they just run. Go ahead. Producing the plant and producing the strawberry, red color strawberry, many you will find. So it is modified stem. But how it is modified into a runner? It is running, it is going ahead. So that runner stem is known as stolon. Runner stem is known as stolon. There should not be any confusion because at the end you might just think how it gets modified, how it reproduces and you are not able to differentiate. But this is bulb stem but bulb and this is stolon. Still a stem, but another modification. So there is a different modification. Still it remains the stem, which carries out vegetative reproduction. So here, it just goes ahead, ahead. So it is known as runner, which is known as stolon. And you see many strawberries in the stolon. This is how the strawberry reproduces. Even some grasses, they are runner. One grass you plant and there will be grass, garden full of grass. Because they are runner, they are stolon, they are runner, they will run and reproduce and they will be there everywhere, even the mint which you eat, it reproduces by the same way. Now another type, another part, another organ, that is leaves. Leaves you connect to carry out photosynthesis, how it can carry out reproduction, but there is a classic example which can reproduce by leaf also. That is bryophyllum. Bryophyllum, on, when it 
When you pour water, you sprinkle water on the leaf. On the edges, you find new bryophyllum developing. So it carries off reproduction by leaf. You have to accept because they are reproducing. And slowly, this will develop roots also and it will fall to the ground and you will have many bryophyllum below. This is how reproduction takes place in bryophyllum by leaves. It's a vegetative structure, but still it reproduces to form new plant. It has got, it has evolved, it is adapted to produce new plants by leaves. Now root. Sweet potato, carrot, turnip, radish. All these are roots. They reproduce by root and they collect uh, food material so that they are able to reproduce. They, they are able to give energy to the new plant. So all these plants we eat very happily. Actually that's the adaptation for their reproduction. They provide energy to the new plant and the root is uh, capable of producing the root plant. That's the adaptation for them. They collect food, they reproduce and give rise to new, new, new plant. So remember, sweet potato is the root. Carrot is the root. Turnip is the root. Radish is the root. All this you'll be able to collect. But now, in stem, you have potato. You have potato. You might think it can be a uh, uh, modified root, but it is not modified root. So you have to remember that it's a stem which is modified, which is modified to go underground and reproduce. So if you have a potato at home, remember, you spring sprinkle, Water, it, it already has bud, eyes, if it gets moisture, warm, it will turn white, then greenish and start the shoot growing. Shoot and root will start growing. But it is the stem, modified underground stem, potato. potato. Whereas sweet potato is modified root. Potato is modified stem. It has got buds. There's God which is known as eyes, buds are known as eyes and they are capable of developing shoot, shoot means upper leaves and root means below, the roots. And this potato is known as chipper because it is a tuber, modified underground stem capable of reproduction. Now similar to stem uh, potato, there are the, it's even the ginger. Now this modified underground stem potato is known as tuber, but ginger is known as rhizome. It has nodes. It has nodes on it which is capable of developing shoot and root and a new plant can be produced by a ginger. So you plant a ginger under a soil, you'll have many plants together. So this is how reproduction takes place by underground stem. So this is vegetative reproduction, vegetative propagation. <laughs> now artificial method of propagation. What we do is just cut the plant and we plant it. It develops the root. So many times we do, we carry out artificial propagation that is cutting the plant and planting at a new place. We normally do for rose, we do for hibiscus, we do for sugar cane also. Sugar cane we get sugar cane juice, we make sugar from it, we make good from it. So these are beneficial. They are beneficial, we just cut and propagate them. Now there are plants, small plants like fern, which are non-flowering plants. They do not flower. But if you take a leaf, beside that leaf, uh, the other side. On the other side of the leaf, there are small dots which you will see green color. As it matured, it will turn brown. When it turns brown, it bursts. It will burst and then will be there in the air. Whenever it gets a suitable 
substratum it will germinate into a new fern flower this is how non flowering plant they propagate by spore formation spore is there in the capsule when it matures the capsule breaks it releases the spore and spore as it gets suitable condition it will germinate into a new fern plant this is how the plant will germinate and please like share and subscribe okay bye